how to focus your watch and deuce and I think the 350 Legend cartridge is useless and stupid. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe there's some secret about it that I haven't figured out yet. So I'm down here on the farm. I have some Winchester white box here, the cheapest stuff you can find. And I've got some 350 Legend ammo and a 350 Legend upper on my rifle AR-15 lower. These rounds I've got here are full metal jacket. Uh, the hollow points were more expensive. And again, I'm just here to see if I can't see if I can figure out why everyone else is talking about the 350 Legend cartridge. Because I can't figure it out. The 350 Legend cartridge is also known as a 9x43. It's a 9mm bullet on top of a 43mm case if you want to go metric, but the name is 350 Legend. At first glance, the 350 case looks like it is derived from a 223 case. And while you may be able to modify a spent 223 case to approximate a 350 Legend cartridge case, the two apparently are not identical and there's quite a bit of work to do to modify one to do the other. This is not the parent case of the 350 Legend. My main beef with this cartridge is due to the fact that it only exists to satisfy straight wall rifle cartridge hunting rules. Now, what are those? In some states, they have passed rules to allow hunters to use straight wall case hunting cartridges in lieu of muzzle loaders or shotgun slugs. But any kind of advantage that the 350 Legend cartridge has over those other options is artificial due to them being far inferior to a 30 6 or anything equivalent. So why do I hate this so much? Well, because it's the newest entry in the straight wall cartridge rifle, I guess, genre, but it's also the weakest, and I think less effective, or least effective of the other options that are already on the market. The other options include, and my favorite, the 450 Bushmaster, which this is a heck of a knockdown power cartridge. That, uh, that does quite a bit of damage. You can't use Flex Seal to fix anything from that, but you can see the difference in size there. And I'll put some better close up photos of that up here. And if you want to really show up to the party with something special, 50 caliber Beowulf, you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot bring a larger caliber, by law, you cannot bring a larger caliber rifle to the, to the party. 50 caliber is where it's at, unless you go to destructive devices, which is a whole NFA issue. And if you want to go old school, 4570 government, which I'm out of live ammo, so you'll have to sat be satisfied with an empty case. But unfortunately, you have only the option of single shot or lever action for the 4570, whereas these three guys, you can get semi-automatic options all day long, including the AR-15 platform. The Thrifty Legend cartridge requires a special magazine because you cannot get more than a couple rounds to work and function in a standard AR-15 magazine. So that's how I used to feel. And then I bought a 350 Legend upper for my AR-15 collection for no other reason because I like to collect all the different types of AR-15s, including the ones I think are stupid. <laughs> By the way, I will be doing a video on the scope I've got mounted there. It is a beast of a scope and very cool. So stay tuned. In a week or two, I will have a video review on it as well. The very first thing I did was take her down to the bench range to see what kind of accuracy I could squeeze out of the 350 Legend cartridge. Now, it is not a ballistically efficient cartridge, just at least in my opinion. It is not very efficient because it is basically a 9 millimeters, a 357 bullet stuffed into a larger case to go a little bit faster than a 357 Magnum cartridge. That's basically the whole design and to function semi automatically.
but I did achieve pretty decent groupings there for both 50, one of these is 50, this is 50 yards, and this is 100 yards. Now, about halfway through the shooting session, unfortunately, the scope did come loose, and I ran out of ammo before I got it really dialed in again. I blame the gunsmith that mounted the scope. Nothing wrong with the scope, nothing wrong with the rifle. And while this accuracy is definitely good enough for deer hunting, it is no better than what I could achieve with the 50 caliber Beowulf. Right there, just three rounds, about an inch and a half grouping. I don't have a target recently from the 450 Bushmaster, but it's also similar as well. So I will say that the cool thing about the 350 Legend is that it is a much flatter shooting cartridge. So if you're hunting deer in very open, very large spaces where you have a couple hundred yards as a normal range to shoot a deer at, and you happen to be in a state that follows the straight wall cartridge rules, then the 350 Legend cartridge is actually a good option for you. Where I'm from, it's very rare to have more than 100 yards distance between the shooter and a deer due to trees and terrain and whatnot. Now let's talk about recoil. The recoil of the 350 Legend is much less than the recoil from a 450 Bushmaster, 50 caliber Beowulf, or a 4570 in an equivalent weight rifle. Those three bigger options feel more like a shotgun slug being shot, like a heavy duty shotgun slug being shot, versus the 350 Legend feeling more like a 308. Now, I personally don't have any issues with heavy recoil, but a lot of people do, and not because they're a wussy or anything, but because there are some medical issues that keep people from shooting things that are heavy in recoil. If you have arthritis in your shoulders, if you've got bone spurs in your shoulders or in your arms, or if your optometrist has told you and warned you about heavy recoil rifles detaching your retina, then you probably shouldn't be hanging around with the big boys in the 350 Legend is a good option if you're in a state that requires straight wall cartridges for hunting deer. This cartridge is cheaper to shoot than the other straight wall options. The 350 Legend usually costs less than half the price per round than the 450 Bushmaster or the 50 caliber Beowulf or the 4570 government rounds. But none of these are plinking cartridges. You're not going to go through a thousand rounds of ammo with this stuff. You're going to go through a box to sight in your scope, maybe, and in another box for the hunting altogether. So a couple of boxes a season will do you in any of these options. And now let's talk about power. At the very beginning, I told you that it was the weakest cartridge amongst all the straight wall cartridges available for those straight wall cartridge state hunting rules. And it's true. But with that being said, the 350 Legend cartridge has plenty of power for hunting deer. I took it down to the farm, as you can see right here, and I was shooting steel with it. And I was pretty impressed with the amount of power that that steel was being rung by. I have not gone over this AR-15 upper yet. It, is, it was an inexpensive one, so this may or may not function, but I'm really looking more toward the cartridge itself, not the functionality of the upper. I'll deal with the upper later. Okay, let's put some steel. Let's put this on some steel here. I don't even know if this thing is, this scope is accurate. I did my best in the bunker to get it lined up. <laughs> it shoots well, or it feels, it felt like it shoots well. <laughs> let's grab that other steel plate. It feels good to shoot, but all my Air 15s feel good to shoot. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put it on safe here, and uh, we'll see what it does to uh, some Dr. Fago or Dr. Now, whatever soda I've got on hand. Here are some very old Dr. Fago. Dr. Fago, if people don't know this, Dr. Fago has, they had their PhD, all the Fagos, <laughs> had their PhD in ballistics. It really did smack those steel plates with a wallop. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like that about it, but I like all my big bore era 15s and I've got them all. I have all the big bore options. So it's only natural it's going to get one of these, but am I impressed with it? We will see. Boom. Oh Jesus. Oh, let me man down, man down. We got to, got to fix Dr. Fago. Whew. Okay.
You just can't have a bad time when you're at the range shooting an Aero 15. You really can't. And while it is the least powerful, it is the fastest shooting cartridge of all the straight wall cartridges available, which means that if you use a saw point bullet or a hollow point bullet, you have a much better chance of it mushrooming out and causing more damage to the deer. Also, because of its speed, it does provide a bigger cavity in the whole cavitation process and ballistics. Is that enough to overcome the fact that it's a much smaller bullet overall? I have no idea. I'm not a ballistics expert, but I will say that after looking at all the numbers and how hard it hit the steel, that I would not have a problem with using it as a deer hunting cartridge. So now that I have some trigger time behind this cartridge and I own an AR-15 chambered in it, do I think that the 350 Legend cartridge is a good cartridge? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but it is very, very good in one very specific purpose. And that is, if you hunt deer in a state that requires a straight wall cartridge to be used, and you are shooting a deer at over 100 yards, and you have some reason why you cannot use a higher recoil rifle, then the 350 Legend cartridge is for you. Otherwise, go with the 450 Bushmaster. If you need semi-automatic, go with the 4570 if you're cool with a single shot or a lever action rifle. And if you want to show off to your friends, the 50 caliber Beowulf. And those will get the jobs done just as well, if not better. And it's just a cooler cartridge to use. Well, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give me a like and go subscribe. A lot more is on the way. If you have any comments, questions, or a show of this, leave that in the comment box below the video. I'll try to get as many as possible, especially if you use the 350 Legend cartridge, and I'm completely wrong with that. Let me know in the comments below, and I would love to talk to you about that. As always, you guys have a great day. See ya.